Hello, everybody. Corday, good to see you, friend. Thank you for joining us. Everyone is slowly trickling in for Give Thanks this Thanksgiving. I'm joined, of course, by Anthony Melchiori. Hello, sir. What's up? <laughs> Listen, I don't know about you, but I feel like we are on the home stretch and Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And so there's a little extra energy that comes from that. Well, I tell you, I had Dr. Osterholm, the guy who's on President-elect Biden's team. Yeah. Uh, and he, you know, he's bipartisan. He's He said good things about... Um, warp speed from this administration. He said good things about the incoming administration, but he's going to be the top guy for the president elect. And he was on my show and I learned a lot. So um, yeah. there's, a lot to be, there's a lot to be grateful for. And excited for, for sure. Okay. So we are going to do things a little bit differently today. Normally I'm pretty hard driving. Like we've got to finish all of these things, but we are going to be a little bit slower. We're going to have some gratitude. We're going to talk about some fun things. I am going to um, give some resources for individual people. So as you're thinking about your Thanksgiving break coming up, I have some books for you and I have some shows for you. We're just going to kind of take a breath and enjoy spending time together. So the first thing, Anthony, is you have been in D.C., correct? I, yeah, it was D.C. And they just got back from Cincinnati. Uh, so how were those trips? Fantastic. Keep your mask on and, um, you know, behave yourself and you can have fun. I mean, Cincinnati is beautiful. And um, DC was great. And uh, we saw three great hotels. We went to, um, we were right two, two blocks from the White House. That's as close as you can get. Um, we saw a hotel that is focused on women called the Xena Hotel, oh. which is really, really focused on um, what women have done for this country and really done in a really great uh, way. And when you walk in, there's a beautiful portrait of uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Again, nothing political, but just what she did for this country and for women's rights. And um, it's made of, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you read up on what it's made of. I know what it's made of. <laughs> we'll just let everybody discover that for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> but you also went to a bank hotel, which is amazing. The, uh, the Riggs Hotel, beautiful hotel, yeah. And it used to be a bank, is that right? Right. It was, yeah. it was a bank. It was, um, uh, it was actually a friend of mine's uh, first bank that she uh, ever had after college ever uh, went to. It's beautiful. And, 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 and I love when they bring together history and amenities and it all flows. And there was a symphony of spirit. There was a there was a way people flowed when they gave you a drink or they gave you the key and something you can't teach. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not teachable. Like Four Seasons does it fine but it's more stiff Ritz Carlton but these people you can just there's this young lady she's 22 years old and I am telling you she's my favorite person that I've met in the hotel industry in 20 years wow she's amazing where'd my picture go no no oh it lost you it went yeah here I am I hope no there we go there we I don't go know what happened I didn't touch on it <laughs> here it goes again Hold how on. crazy <laughs> That is very strange, Anthony. Let me see if I can. Is that me? I don't think. How weird. I don't think it's me. How okay. about now? All right. You know what? It, it, I don't know. It's my camera. Um, it looks like it's my camera. So hold on. It's not going to be as good because I'm going to give you the camera from my computer. So it's not going to be as good. It's going to be darker. Um, but That's okay. Yeah. So reason my computer camera is um, maybe it's loose. So just give me one second as you fill some time. I will yeah. see if it's loose. I will. So actually, um, I want to hear more about the DC hotel. Matt and I took our first trip uh, since February last week. We went to Florida, so we had our masks on and went to Orlando. Um, the hotel or the airport was very, very empty, which made me very sad for Orlando, but it was a good trip. Um, I will say that it is the first trip I've taken, Anthony, since our association with you. And so since I've learned how to do a, a room um, check. And so this is what I found in my room. Oh, that's not good. And I wasn't even looking super hard for it. It was like, I was far enough away that I looked and I thought, oh, that's not going to be good. So, um, but otherwise it was a good trip. I was happy to not be in Abilene for a little while. As the Hotel Impossible guy said, yeah. that's disgusting. 
Um, but it was just the, this young lady, 22 years old. She's the assistant front office manager. I would give her any hotel to run. There was some, she graduated with a um, uh, bachelor's in finance, didn't like finance. And she's going to be, I, I get, I got her cell number. I said, I'm going to hire that girl. Amazing young lady. Absolutely. Awesome. One of my favorite people. Just so, is such it, a Is this who you were talking about today where the general manager was like, do not hire Taylor. Do not oh, yeah. steal her away. <laughs> well, that's funny. Cause yeah, we, we had some technical issues. So we posted it today. It wasn't live. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Was I saw it today. And he's like, please don't take her away. <laughs> oh, I will be taking her. <laughs> You're like, that's going to happen for sure. Um, okay. Well, let me tell you our roadmap for today. We have, all positive things. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about good news. We're gonna share some good things. And then we're gonna talk about Thanksgiving and I'll give you resources. So let's start like we usually do with some fun. Um, here are some pictures. I told my colleagues, like I have to keep finding more and more embarrassing pictures of me. So Which one do you, the hat? No, not this one. This is our heading. So th this one first is you. And we had a disagreement in our office. Are you a pirate or a cowboy? Pirate. That's what I said. I was like, these lays made me think that you were a pirate. What is happening here? For a treasure, we search all around. We search <laughs> all around. A search goes all around. We don't dance. That, that was basically my entire uh, theater uh, life. We actually, that, that, these people, we won uh, the junior, sing, we won to sing for the entire city. And we we're the only junior class to do that ever. Wow. At that point. And the guy next to me is a guy named Michael Weintraub, who's a friend of mine. I haven't seen him ever. Randy Amster, who's next to me, was my girlfriend's brother, who went on to become, got a PhD, and he is a professor at Washington uh, University. Julia Bank is a, she saves dogs. And I don't know, oh, and Susan Mecker, she is a, I believe, a nurse. That's amazing. Well, I really appreciate this picture. I had to find, I don't know if I've told you that my mom, in, in Manhattan was an actress. So we were always dressing up. Here's me dressed up on the left. And then on the right, we always had to do embarrassing things as a family because my mom liked to perform. So this is we're in the middle of our like kazoo medley that she made us do in front of a bunch of people. Um, but I do think that we side by side have some show business genes. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I, I, th I think I, we do. <laughs> I, would, I don't think I, I was like a junior in high school and I still I think I, uh, at that point, didn't go through puberty. I was still growing. <laughs> I was, I wrestled in high school. In that picture, I was 97 pounds. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm 170 pounds today. It was 97. Wow. I look, yeah, like, I look like, I look like, a, but look at that hair, man. John Travolta hair right there. It reminds me of Tony Danza. Yeah, yeah. Every, right? He actually went to my height. He went to my middle school. Tony yeah. Day. I, that, that, you could sell that that was Tony Danza to me. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, that didn't last very long. That was maybe a year later it was gone. <laughs> okay, are you ready for our 20 questions? That was my favorite part of the month. All right. First of all, your favorite holiday? Easter. How many watches do you own? Zero. Is that true? I was a protocol officer and I have to put everybody on time. Everybody was on the schedule and I never, ever, and I had this before cell phones. I never looked at the watch. I can tell you what time it is all the time. Call me up, text me one day or, or just call me. Don't even text me. Call me and say, what time is it? I can tell you almost within 10 minutes what time it is. I wake up in the middle of the night and I don't know what time it is. I never, ever, 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 ever wore a watch ever. That is amazing. That is like a human trick. Yeah, I know what time it is all the time. Wow, that's that's shocking to me. Okay, are you a morning person or night person? Both. I knew you were gonna say that. I <laughs> wake up talking? early and I go to sleep late, and I and I fun. I would say my I function the best at ten thirty in the morning, um, but I'm the most alert at about midnight. Yeah, that's how I am. I'm a I am a night person. Um, okay, not, we've got to cut out ice cream because I know this about you, but other than ice cream, what is your guilty pleasure? Nathan's hot dogs from Coney Island, Nathan's. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, okay, window seat or aisle seat? When, uh, aisle, aisle. Okay. Um, how many pairs of shoes do you own? <laughs> Funny you say that. Um, I wear the same pair of shoes for years, but I own probably... 18 pairs, but I, I, I haven't worn any other shoes. So, so I just went on a business trip to Ohio. I was working for Centos 
and I threw my shoes in the bag. I always packed the night before, but I was like, listen, I'm going to be there a night, 24 hours, throw a suit, shoes, you know, and I'm done. And I don't have to overpack. I, I took on, you know, a carry on, which I never do. I put on two left shoes. So yesterday I'm doing this big video shoot. They have a major crew. I mean, they have oh three people and I have black sneakers on and um, I told a little white line so my ankle hurts so I couldn't wear my shoes. Oh but no. I actually have a picture I sent to my daughter and I said, what's wrong with this picture? And she goes, you're such an idiot. <laughs> that moment where you take them out and you're like, no. Well, well I, I said that and then I just laughed. I was like, of course. I mean, as much as I traveled trying to find them, as much as I've traveled, um, it's bound to happen, right? That's so funny. I'm trying to find it. Um, um, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Black or blue ink? Black. Is that even a question? Yeah. Listen, my favorite is blue. I didn't ask you about like pink or purple. Oh, you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What are your favorite toppings on pizza? Um, I'm Italian from Brooklyn. Ta uh, cheese and sauce is my favorite. Okay. But then every once in a while, I'll get, I'll get some sausage. Okay, sausage, cheese, and sauce, okay. Yeah, here, here, um, here's the picture. This me to my daughter, can you see? Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. Like, oops. Okay, um, do you like jigsaw puzzles? No, I hate them. I don't either. I hate them I too. Them. I I, 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 people see that as a fatal flaw, but I personally like people who don't like I jigsaw puzzles. puzzles. So. If, if, if that's my worst one, I'll be all right. Yeah. Do you like crossword puzzles? No. Well, yes. The answer is I do, um, but I have to be in the mood for them. When I'm in the yeah. mood for them, I get obsessed with them. But yeah, I have to be really <laughs> in the mood for them. Okay. Do you play any online games? Poker. Poker. For no money. Okay. How many suits do you own? Twelve. Um. If someone were visiting New York City for the first time, what would you tell them they must see or do? Oh, that's a tough one. So I'm going to make sure I'm very thoughtful on this one. Sunday morning, Central Park. Oh, that's good. You have to walk like to Central that. Park on a nice Sunday morning about... No Start at six, but really, like I like going really early on a Sunday, but like nine, 10 o'clock on a Sunday in the summer. Oh my God, there's nothing like it. It is the soul of, of, of my universe. I love that. All right, ribeye or filet? Filet. How many pocket squares do you own? It's funny, we just, we just, we just folded them all the other day. Oh, hundreds. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll settle for hundreds. Um, Croatia or New Zealand? I haven't been to New Zealand and I've been to Croatia. Uh, I, I love Croatia, uh, but I would say New Zealand. It's one of my dream places. Okay. What is the latest you have ever slept in? Oh my God, I don't know. I would say um, in the last 20 years, I'd say um, 1030. Um, have you ever been fly fishing? Yes, with uh, Greg Morgan, um, uh, the country singer in Alaska. Oh, wow. That's, did you like it? Um, we were shooting, so I don't, like, you, you really can't, everything I did when I'm shooting is just, it's a different feeling. But yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I have been and fly fishing in Alaska, too. In fact, the only time I've ever been fly fishing. And we went with a guide and he was so helpful to me. It was super easy. I caught tons of fish. You can't go. Like, right. Yeah, he was like, yeah, here, put your, put it right there. And I was like, okay. So right. I caught a bunch of salmon. It was great. Okay, here's the last question. Will you please tell us the perfume bottle story? Oh, you haven't told that story before? You, you've told it to me, but you haven't told it to our audience. Okay. I was at the Lucerne Hotel on the Upper West Side. The Upper West Side, um, when, I was take over, when I took over the Lucerne, 79th and Amsterdam, people really didn't think it was a great area. The only two uh, companies that I really can get business from was Columbia University and ABC. Columbia University, uh, Bolenbach, who's now the, the, the president of Columbia, had just come. That's how far, this was maybe 18 years ago. And um, we couldn't get the contract. And my salesperson was very good, Laura, couldn't get the sales, couldn't get the contract. And I said, listen, we need that contract. It's vital to our survival. She said, they won't, they won't sign with us. I said, get me a lunch. 
got me a lunch at Nice Matan, the restaurant I had just opened um, for the hotel. Well, uh, Simon Oren opened it, but it was in our hotel. Anyway, I'm sitting next to a young lady who works for the president's office. And she said to me, um, what would you do if you weren't um, a general manager? I said, I'd be concierge. And she said, why? I said, because if you want pink elephants in a tutu dancing in your lobby in five minutes, I'm the guy to get make that happen. And she said, she pulls out a perfume bottle, which is one of those touchstones, you know, for stress. It used to be perfume. She got it as a, uh, as a wedding gift, uh, you know, one of the door gifts when you go to a wedding. And she said, I keep this because I like the rock, but I the perfume in it was the best I've ever had. I said, give it to me. And I go, I'll find it. She goes, if you find that, if you find that, I, I, she goes, I will give you the contract, no questions asked, for that price that you, that you set. I said, okay, not only am I going to find it, it'll be on your desk by five o'clock. So I go into the office before the internet and I asked Laura, I, it, maybe it was the beginning of the internet when it took forever before Google. And I said, um, Laura and a couple other people, I said, find this, no excuses, get out of my office. By about three o'clock, they found it, a little brownstone down in Chinatown, somewhere in the basement. No idea how they found it. Swear to God, true story. It was on her desk and I wish I had the, I wish I had the, um, voice message to this day because she screamed like a little girl. Well, I, I, Columbia University gave us the contract. I love that story because it just, I just would never bet against you, Anthony. I just wouldn't, you know? Oh, you, know what? you can bet against me and you and you may lose. I mean, you may win, um, but I'll probably have a lot of blood on my, um, on my shirt. I'd I, I be close to death. Um, we were just talking about that. I, I just did a thing for Hilton uh, just uh, about an hour ago with the president of Hilton, and we were talking to all his military employees. And he said, what's the difference between people in the military and people out of the military? Um, when we're told to take a hill, we take the hill. Yeah, it's a different perspective, right? Not we'll try or maybe or we'll see, but that's what we're doing. You know, when they say die trying, I mean, I came out of the military. Yeah, that's right. Well, thank you. I always like 20 questions with you. Um, so I want to set the stage for us today. I would really like for us to think about gratitude and how we can be thankful in this season. I think it's really important to say that gratitude is a habit. I know when you and I first talked, you were like, gratitude is so important to me. I know that that's kind of a core value of yours. Um, do you want to talk for just a minute about why gratitude is important to you or, or why that kind of resonates with you? Because when all bets are off, what do you got? I mean, you know, if, if somebody's in a wheelchair, they're, they're thank God that they're not dead, right? If somebody's on their last breath, they're like, I'm grateful for the life I've had. If God forbid you had a major loss in your life, you're like, thank God for that person that came into my life to help me. You have no choice. Gratitude is no choice. You don't have a choice. If you live an ungrateful life, you're a miserable human being. And period, end of story. Or you're a crazy person and you're going to go crazy. I'm nuts. I'm out of my mind. And if I don't have great gr gratitude to kind of keep me down and, and keep me grounded and appreciate what I have. My daughter the other day, I, I, I was getting really upset. And she goes, I'm really, she sent me a text. She goes, I'm really upset. I know you're stressed. I'm like, I'm not stressed. I'm not more stressed than anybody else. It's like, you just pissed me off. <laughs> so you just got, you just got me upset. And so I left, I walked away. So I wouldn't say things I wouldn't did mean or yell or scream. Um, but like when people put that out, well, you're stressed. No, I'm not stressed. I'm, I'm dealing with what's in front of me. But when I, when I was on a plane and I was thinking about it, I was like, I'm grateful that I have a daughter who's capable of annoying me. I have a friend who has a, who has a son who has severe autism and he won't know what it's like to argue with, with a 20 year old college student about whatever it is. He won't know what it's like when his kid at 18 years old has its first beer behind your back. And, and th those are the things I'm grateful for because I'm able to have them. So um, I, I don't know what you do without gratitude. I don't well, know how you live life without gratitude. Yeah, it's such an interesting way to then orient from loss instead of loss or anger or whatever to then orient to, but there's so many positive things that are uncovered even when it's not the best or you're you're well, struggling with well, when people say you know why me or why us now with the pandemic why us it's not fair why not us we, this this world is crazy i mean people yeah. are killing each other there's wars there's there's crazy people um that 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 are making laws and and, and there's all kinds of stuff and so i think it's like god's way of saying time out everybody just take a chill and let's let's show what's important and what's important is you can't leave your house 
you have to get to know your family again. You got to put your cell phone down. You got to watch movies. You got to know, you got to know what your kids are doing. You, you got to be and actually start to like each other. Do you know divorce is actually, you know, you being in that field, divorce is actually down for, for, for uh, the lowest it's been, I think in 40 years or something. Wow. You would think it would be up because people started to realize like, you know what, I'm stuck with you. I might as well like you. Right. <laughs> right? And, and, and I'm <laughs> I get along better with my wife when we're home than I do when I'm running around the world. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, um, I, I think it's time for everybody to just take a chill. And I'm as intense as I've ever been. I'm as motivated as I've ever been, but it's hard. You know, did I tell you why I ran the marathon? Mm-hmm. Nine, uh, 2001, right after 9-11, I ran the marathon. I was scheduled to run the marathon before 9-11. Um, but I ran in the flags and uh, from the fire departments in the middle of the intersections and the the, the, the boats in, in the harbor. It was just absolutely majestic. And um, and nobody knew I ran a marathon, but my wife, I didn't want anybody to know. And I don't really ever talk about it. And when people do say, why'd you run a marathon? I said, because if I'm ever in a wheelchair, I'm not looking at the TV going, that's one thing I wanted to do and I couldn't do. Yeah. And I was like, if I'm paralyzed, I don't want to be paralyzed, but if I am, at least when I see people running, I was like, I did that. And so, yeah. so, so I, you know, I always think of like, why not me? You know, like, yeah, I, don't want any, I don't, you know, hopefully, you know, I, I want, I don't want things to happen, but, but like so many people are going through so many different things. That's right. You know? And recognizing where you are and being grateful, I think, is what this season, especially. Even is. now with kids online, with my children online, with teachers teaching online, I see my wife every day teaching online, you know, to pre-K teachers. She has so much joy. She, the other day, she looked at me with tears in her eyes. I just want to meet them. She built such a great mm-hmm. relationship with these kids and they built it with each other through the internet because she wanted to. So instead of saying in the beginning, she's like, this, st- this stinks and this is hard. Now she's like, she's grateful. So at least, you know, to me, it's be grateful for whatever you can do because that one little word, even that smile, when you come on and you look at a student, that smile may change their day. Absolutely. I mean, as we've talked about before, like you want to feel like you're seen. And so somebody smiling at you and seeing you makes a really big difference. Um, okay, Anthony, you know that I, we've talked before how I curate tools for our schools. So like the fogger and the temperature taker. Today, what I'm doing though, is I'm curating tools for our people, for our clients, because we're about to go into Thanksgiving break. So I learned about something on your show that I would love for you to talk um, to us about. It okay. is Travel Zoo. Can it's, you tell us about it? It's called what? Can you go to the next? Yeah, Travel Zoo. Oh, Travel Zoo. Okay, wow. All right, you really pay attention. <laughs> um, back, in, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a history lesson. Back in the day when, um, you know, the internet started to come out and so there was this newsletter, the Travels where they came out and we're like, what's this? It's a bunch of crap. So I would get like calls from salespeople saying, hey, if you give us your best rate, we will um, get you on this newsletter and we have 200,000 people or whatever, like, yeah, whatever. And then we realized in the slow period, we were competing against other hotels in New York City. There's only one um, they only showcase one hotel per city per newsletter. And sometimes they don't even do one, one per newsletter, maybe it's every couple of, of weeks that they do the newsletter for, they say, New York City. And um, anyway, they were so good at getting the best rates out of people. And they got such a great um, um, uh, audience, millions and millions and millions of people, that we realized the first time we were on uh, travels, we were sold out for the dates we needed. So you, it, but you have to give them rates you can't find anywhere else. So if you if you subscribe to Travelzoo, I I'm guaranteeing you as a 33 year old professional, a 33 year professional in travel, you can't find better rates anywhere anywhere. It is shocking how good their deals are. Also, they're doing this thing, save now, travel later, which I really love because that means that you can say like I want to travel in 2021 or 2022, but I'm gonna buy my vacation now. So, and then if you decide not to go, it's refundable, which is really amazing for people who are like, yeah, you know, it, it, I see that I'm going to want to travel in the future. These deals are really amazing. Yeah, and hotels are just trying to pay their mortgage. So that money you're paying them today, they're going to figure out the problem later if everybody cancels because they just need to pay their mortgage. Yeah, that's exactly right. I don't know if you know. Um, so one more forward. I don't know if you know that they have a deal to Japan. Have you been paying attention? Ooh, no, go forward one more. No, I haven't. Um, Eight hundred ninety nine dollars. When when do I go? Yeah, you need to check it out. It's too, it's way cheap, and I think it's like two years. You can book it for two years from now. 
Wow, $899, Japan Express. Yeah, wow. down from 2000 Wow. Okay, well, well I'm watching out for you. So I know what you can get me for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I really love this, Anthony, because I think as we're looking forward to the future, things will, how we will have our next normal things will be evolving. And I think it's really fun to think about traveling and getting back to seeing the world and that sort of thing. I like what you said, our next normal. And, you know, the one thing I hope and pray for is that people understand um, we can have another pandemic. We can have another uh uh-oh moment. We can have another uh, problem. And we will. Um, Something will happen. And, um, you know, that, that, that coffee you have in the morning, that workout routine you have in the morning, that friend that you call or that, or, or that, you know, or your spouse or your kid, that one tender moment that you have, may only have today. That's maybe the only moment you have to yourself today. That may be it. You know, that interaction I had with that young lady, um, Taylor at, at, at the hotel for that few minutes I spoke to her, it, it delighted me. It delighted my whole trip. And so, you know, I, I never run fast enough where I don't know where I've been or where I'm going. Like, I, I really try to, like, I went downstairs and I told my wife, I said, I just did a Q&A for Hilton. Me and the president of Hilton just did a Q&A and he said he wrote down more notes uh, in my one hour Q&A than he's ever written in his career. Which and 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 like I I took a moment and I said to my wife I said I'm proud of myself for that like that like like that I've got myself in a position where the president of Hilton is listening to me, not that oh look at me whatever at all it's just like how did I get here, yeah. what me, like he just said that about me and so I just don't let anything get past me without having tremendous gratitude for it gratefulness absolutely. Well, I want to talk about a couple of our schools, so I'm going to share some good news. Um, you know that so many schools in the beginning were really concerned about 20% cuts in their budget. We have not had any schools that we work with have, that have seen that kind of um, retraction in retention. Many of them are at the same. A couple of them are much higher, and then several of them are down, but if they're down, it's like by 2%. So I want to do some shout outs. First of all, Hollins University, which is in Roanoke, University, uh, Roanoke Virginia, um, they are up 11% in COVID, which is amazing. Um, they worked so hard. It's an all-girls school. They've done a really, really good job over um, the last summer and the semester of getting students engaged. Also Bethel University, which is in St. Paul, Minnesota. They've been our clients for a very long time. Jim and Miranda have worked so hard with students. They're up 3.7% in COVID, which is pretty amazing. And then Sacred Heart, which is in Connecticut, is another school that I want to do a shout out for. They've only used us for a year and they're up 3.6%. And so I'm proud of all of those schools because I've been in constant contact with them. And I know how hard it is in a time of COVID to keep your students close to make sure they really feel seen. So there's a lot of kids from a neighborhood that go to Sacred Heart. Really? Yeah. yeah. I'm so impressed with them. They're doing a really, really great job. So yeah, but if I can if I can interrupt you real quick, it's yeah. not I mean you, you guys work so closely with them, but it talks to those leaders because they're working with you because they know it matters. But all the other things they're doing too matters. Yeah. You've helped them and that's made a big impression. But those kind of people are people that do the right things every day. That's right. right. And, it's, and it's a system, right? They have all of these little things aligned so that they have these really amazing outcomes. I think that that's a really good point. Okay, so I want to talk about Thanksgiving. Um, Anthony, I don't know if you had this experience, um, but Thanksgivings are, are different for every family. So I'm going to do some polls of our participants. The first one is whether or not you eat breakfast on Thanksgiving. Do you eat breakfast on Thanksgiving Day? Something light, probably. Yeah. yeah. Something light. I don't eat. I usually just have coffee. Yeah. Um, We're Italian, so we eat a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's true. I like to say I'm just saving my stomach for Thanksgiving usually. Um, but I have this experience where it looks like almost, well, 60% of you do eat breakfast on Thanksgiving. The next question is, do you travel for Thanksgiving? So what do you guys, nor- on a, in a normal year, what do you do for Thanksgiving? Do you stay home or do you go somewhere? What do you do? I stay home for all the holidays. Everybody comes to us. Really? Extended yeah. family comes? Um, we actually, it's really my wife's family comes. Uh, her her sister, her father, my uncle Leo, who's in the hospital, say a prayer for him, and uh, my cousin Lisa. 
and niece and nephews and my, uh, my of course my family yeah so it looks like 56 percent of people visit someone else's house so that's really interesting you're kind of an outlier there that you have people come um, and then the last question that I want to ask here is when do you eat? So do you eat like lunchtime or do you eat late lunch or do you eat dinner? Well, Sundays we eat dinner at two o'clock and uh, a lot of our holidays we eat early, but Thanksgiving, because Thanksgiving um, uh, falls during the week, I think we eat like five o'clock, I want to say. Oh, wow. So late. Yeah. Maybe four. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if you have this experience when, when I first got married, um, I thought I knew how Thanksgiving was supposed to go. And then I went to my in-laws house for Thanksgiving and they do things completely differently. Did you have your first Thanksgiving with your wife? Any strange things that you were not accustomed to? Oh my God. I was going to say no, but then yes. Um, my mom would make sure the table is spotless, right? Not surprising, right? That's where I get it from. Spotless before anything else came onto the table. Her family, we would have, we'd be eating dessert and we still had the soup on the table. And I was just like, I can't function like that. I can't function with four meals on the table, all the dirty dishes on the table. And um, then and that all became um, less problematic. That it worked out. Yeah, that's that what happened. Out. Well, I will tell you that my first Thanksgiving, so you know, I'm from Manhattan. I married a Texan. Right. I did not know this, but hunting season is closely tied to Thanksgiving. Oh, I got to tell a story about that. Go ahead. Okay, so my first Thanksgiving at my in-law's house, I wake up and I'm going to get my coffee and I look in the backyard and there is a deer hanging from the tree in the backyard that my father-in-law is butchering. Right. And I was like, where am I? <laughs> well, I, get, I bet that was on a plate Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we yes, yes. We're eating deer that he got that morning. So yeah. I was seriously like, hey, the deer. And they're like, oh, yeah, Thanksgiving hunting. That's what we do. Okay. Didn't know that. Thanks. <laughs> my, my When people say, when do you get mad? It's a February 14th. They go, oh, that's so romantic Valentine's Day. No, the only reason we went Valentine's Day is because my father-in-law hunts. And there was no other Saturday we can find. And he's like, then I'm not there. That's okay. You go. And I go hunt. That's so and, um, I don't know if that's Italian accent. But he, um, <laughs> he, he um, so we had to change it to Valentine's Day. That's hilarious. Well, it looks like most everybody eats a late lunch, one to three. I want to um, know if everybody's doing a regular Thanksgiving this year. Or are people going to do what yeah, they So you guys, I don't have a poll set up, but you can chat. If you are planning on just doing like a smaller this year, like a nuclear family, or if you're still planning on, on traveling, please chat those um, those uh, plans. Yeah, we're so that you have to the household because, um, you know, my father-in-law is 82 years old. And um, we haven't been in the house with him uh, and everybody's thinking we'll do it, but it's, we're, everybody will get tested, but still we're, we're, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out if we just yeah. do it outside, it's going to be 60 degrees, but I'm a little nervous. It's definitely, um, it's nervous. It looks like oh. you do have some nuclear things. Talk about Uncle Leo. Uncle Leo, um, we bought him that for Thanksgiving and he left it at my house. So uh, the kids bought it for him. So that's uh, me on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I like it. I think it's my Thanksgiving on it. Maybe we could make Thanksgiving cards out of it. Um, okay, looks like we've got a lot of just nuclear family this year. Also, some people in strict quarantine, so they're not going to be with their families. Um, I want to bring some more good things to the forefront. So, one thing just um, for Ferris Resources is that we have recently been featured in Education Technology. Insights. So we have a cover story. It's very exciting. We've been interviewed for that. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. It's like official. Yeah. So that's fun. Um, but also, Anthony, we have not talked about all of the irons you have in the fire. People can be watching you all the time if they wanted to. So will you take us through these three different things that that you do? Well, of course, we have our, our TV shows that we do. Um, right now, we're not filming them, but we're hopefully be starting soon. Um, then on Thursdays, I do I take behind the scenes of Hotel Impossible with my partner, that's Jeremy Pinkerton, who's getting married uh, December nineteenth. Um, yeah, I'm really excited for her. 
and we go and show you which, like, why do I make the decisions I make? I talk fast, I walk fast, and people think that I put a lot of thought into it. And I can tell you, every decision I make on Hotel Impossible is extremely well thought out, uh, even though I move pretty fast. And then um, uh, we do a LinkedIn show, Facebook show, every single day live. Actually, I should say Monday through Thursday at noon. And we have 750,000 listeners a month. And we have everybody from CEOs of brands on and it's great and you know and, and and you know and then i have a business called our jail hospital i'm um hospital success i have two businesses hospital success where we do consulting so i have a lot of consulting clients and we're just about to um take over a, a development five-star development in long beach california oh wow well, yeah and I, and i'm and i'm very fortunate enough to be the um, spokesperson for Cintas and several other brands so yeah that is very cool. Well, I just was thinking if people enjoyed what we do, there's plenty of other opportunities for them to hear. Oh, and my book is coming out. Now that you let me know. It's yes. uh, the first draft's done and I'm going through it. I just went through 20 pages of editing and um, it's, uh, I can't wait till the book gets out. And at this point, I don't even care if I sell a, a, a book. I just want <laughs> it all written down. Yeah, that's going to be so exciting. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, okay. More shout outs. We have a school in uh, Canada, the King's University, 5.5% freshman increase. Dr. Melanie Humphreys is a great partner to us. I will tell you, she is the best leader I have ever met in higher education. She is a person who I met her someplace and I said, well, here's what we do. And she said, well, we need that. And I said, okay, well, I can do some demos or I can do, and she was like, no, I, that's what I want. And I was like, oh, okay. So it was the fastest sales ever. Um, and she's just a remarkable leader. For I, like, I like those. I like those kind of people. It's like that's what I want. I love those kind of people. Um, also, we have a school, Montreat College, which is named for a mountain retreat. Some people went and tried to find the most beautiful place they could find, and they picked this place. The first time I set foot on their campus, I cried because it was it's in the so ugly, huh? <laughs> it was so <laughs> gorgeous. Um, they are up two percent uh, as well. So two other schools that we're really proud of. Okay, I have um, a hotel for you. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see. You're going to give it to me like for free? No, 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 no. Oh. Not, wait a minute. I, hold on one second. I'm a little discomfort. There we go. Oh, I know what that is. I know exactly what it is. Daytona Beach, Florida. How, and I know the little hotel uh, called, hold on, don't tell me. Um, not the New Yorker. Um, oh my God. Um, the, the Dolphin Inn. The dream in the dream. In. Isn't it funny how you can show me six bricks of yellow and I know it's that hotel? Well, I had confidence in you. I was like, I know this isn't very much, but I think this yellow and beach is going to give it away. And yeah. I know why you thought it was the Dolphin Inn because there were 7,000 dolphins scattered across right. all of it, right? The, and the reason I knew that, that yellow, I, I think we had a nickname for it on the show, non compliance yellow. Yes. <laughs> they, passed, they passed an order ordinance that in the town, no one else could ever paint a building this color because it was so offensive, right? Um, okay, so this Old is- violation yellow. That's what we called it. <laughs> Old violation yellow. So oh, that was a family. Cindy, so here's why I picked this, Anthony, because I was thinking about Thanksgiving and I was thinking about family. And I also was thinking about rest and gratitude. So- the backstory is that Cindy and John sold everything in Kentucky to, to retire, to buy this hotel. They were successful for a while and then they had the recession and then she got sick and Jody, their son took over, right? Um, and he worked the front desk, but he did not like people. Here's one like of my, people. I have to interrupt you. One of my favorite lines in Hotel Impossible history. And just so people know, we don't, I have no idea what she's going to do. So I have no idea. This is all just coming back to me. My favorite line in Hotel Impossible history was, um, so you're, take, you're taking over and you work at the front desk? He goes, yeah, I work at the front desk all day long. And he was like, but, but I hate people. And I was like, oh, you got to get good at that. <laughs> well, it was funny because his mom kept saying, no, you don't. And you were like, <laughs> like no, I'm telling him what he does and does not like. He's saying he does not like it, right? <laughs> you remember going, you got to get good at that. That's important. Yeah. You got to get, if you're going to be a good hotelier, you've got to get good at that. So I, I want to talk more about the family. But the other thing that this reminded me of is, is like when you go to Thanksgiving, 
like at your great aunt's house and there's just so much tchotchke and like so much stuff. And just so you know, that 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 front desk, I mean, you're showing those chairs in that desk and that, that is one foot away from the door. Yeah. So you turn around, you got to go outside and change your mind. It's so small. <laughs> There was so much stuff. So I just felt like this was like, I ha I feel like I have an aunt whose, whose house kind of feels like this. Um, but for Jody, so he, first of all, did not like people. He looked so sad, Anthony, so <laughs> distressed. Oh my God, that is the saddest picture of a human. <laughs> it's like, you just look at his eyes. Don't even look at his mouth. I'm just covering it. Like his mouth looks sadder than his eyes, actually. Oh, that is just bad. Oh my God. This is when you're saying like, so how is it to work here? And he's just like. It sucks. Awful. <laughs> and you could tell because he, so do you remember the $25 charge? Oh, of course I do. Okay, can we, I, can, I can recite this entire show, man. Okay, tell us what he wanted to charge you $25 up his people for. Um, to wash the dishes. That yeah. if you left dishes in the sink, if I remember right. If you left dishes in the sink, um, he will charge you twenty five dollars. So you have to wash your own dishes. So now you tell the audience what I did, and that, this was on the fly with no preparation. Okay. Well, two things. The first thing that you did is you were like, "Okay, so I drank out of this dish. I'm like wiping it with this dish rag, and then I'm putting it in, and so now I don't have to pay the twenty five dollars. So you're, it's filthy. Like you have no idea the state right, of it. And I spit in the glass, and I went like this. Now, if you're a drunk kid, you know, in Daytona on spring break, you know you're doing something bad to that glass before you put it back. The other thing that was really funny is you said to Jody, like, why do you have this to sign? And he said, I'm not washing people's dishes. And you were like, you're in hospitality. You are washing. Your dishes. You wash people's dishes, bro. <laughs> you clean their toilet bowl, but you won't wash their dish. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Also, this episode gave me the heebie-jeebies. I, I really don't understand why you have to put your hands in all of these places that while I'm watching, I'm just like, oh, Anthony. Yeah, I and I don't do it. I don't do it for, for drama. I do it because that's what I do. I mean, that's yeah. what I'm living. So it's not like people people are like, oh, you're doing that for the show. It's like, listen, there's sometimes I don't do it because I'm not in the mood. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm, I don't know. I'm just, maybe I just ate or I, I thought that maybe I shouldn't probably do that. But most of the time I'm doing it, I'm not doing it for drama. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad you're doing it because at least we know how gross it is. But yeah, I always get the heebie-jeebies. Okay. Um, two more, uh, a couple more things I want to say about this. So this one is, <laughs> this is where you are saying this color is against the city ordinance, this yellow color. Right. First of all, you said that you were going to paint the whole hotel in four days, which that was amazing. And Blanche is still probably mad at me for that. It is honestly the only time I've ever heard you say, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to finish this. I, and I've heard you say that. And then I said, it's because it, we start painting and, you know, Florida, you know, wait five seconds, it's going to be a uh, rainstorm. And so it's raining and it's dripping. And I go, it's dripping. <laughs> she looks at me, <coughs> excuse me. She looks at me and she goes, because it's raining. <laughs> and we just painted it. <laughs> yeah, you said, I mean, that was the time where she said, I'm not sure we're going to get it. No, you said, I'm not sure we're going to get it done. She's like, we'll get it done. We'll get it done. You're like, I don't know about that. <laughs> no, I know. And, and the guy who's doing it was like, really like he, 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 like he talks to my producers and said, yeah, we can figure it out. And then he talks to me and I go, dude, we got to do that in two days. No, excuse me. We're not painting one side of the building and saying the whole building's painted. We don't do that. And then he looked at the producer and, and they looked at me and I'm like, paint the building. Good paint luck. The building. Yeah. Yeah, that was stressful. Well, the other thing I told you, we're talking about gratitude. I really appreciated Cindy because she'd been really, really sick and she was trying to be in charge of everything. And what you did here was give her permission to say like, hey, you need to sit on the beach and be and let your family manage this. And she was so grateful for the permission. And also I did not think she was going to let go of you. Yeah. Yeah, she, uh, she yeah she held me pretty tight. Well, I cried, man. I cried a lot on the show, but she, um, you know, when you have a tough person, you gotta like, you gotta just put your foot over the wall and just slide on the other side of the wall and go, "Hi, I'm here. How are you? Right. My name's Anthony. 
I'm not going anywhere until you and I figure each other out. And that she was very much that person. It's like, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm not here to embarrass your son. And believe me, they went to the producers and said, they think, you know, we're embarrassing. I said, I'm not here to embarrass anybody, but you know, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, it was really good. And at the end she rested and Blanche did such a good job of making it really beautiful. Yeah. I was really and at the end of the day, you know, I talk about it in my book too. At the end of the day, you're born and people tell you, your parents tell you how to dress, how to eat, where to go to school, where to live. And it's time you're 20, 25 years old. What is your brand? You're not sure of your brand. Do you remember what she said here? Uh, again, I can remember the line like it was yesterday. You remember what she said? Tell me. We show her these beautiful patio, this patio furniture. And I go, this is yours. And you remember what she said? Mm -mm. She goes, this is too nice for us. Aww. I never forgot that as long as I live. I was like, she goes, this is too nice for us. We don't deserve this. Yeah. Like, of course you deserve it. Yeah, she was such a hard. And hard another thing. interesting thing about the show, we had a lot of rain, but Matt Gutman from, I don't know if you know Matt Gutman from 2020, he does Dateline and all that stuff. He's one, he's everywhere. He, he's on ABC every night. And he came down and did a spotlight on me. It's the best new spotlight I've ever had done. You can check it out, Matt Gutman. Oh. It's, the, it's, it's, it's about 15, 16 minutes long. And he spent a couple of days with us. And I'll tell you, he was the most thoughtful interview I've ever done. Wow. I will have to check that out. That's awesome. Well, I was really happy because it was nice for them to have something nice. And I look at that. It's just a can of paint, a couple of touch ups. Did and look what, awesome you did. Job. what you did. I was really impressed with her. I think uh, we have some of the outside also. So let me see. Yeah. So from that to that. In 48 so, hours. We painted it. No, probably less than 48 hours. So much better. Yeah. Well, they painted it. I don't, I don't, I don't do hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay. I want to talk about some more good things. So things as people are thinking about their break. Um, I also learned on your show about Amazon Explorer. Can you, do you remember this? Can you talk about it? Oh, um, yeah. When basically you're like the concierge, uh, Amazon Explorers like the concierge, and it really interacts with what's going on in that town. It's kind of Airbnb did kind of similar thing. Let's see. I think on my next slide, I have some examples of that. Give me one second. There we go. So yeah. these are all just experiences that you can have um, as you're thinking about being at home for Thanksgiving or your break, just some fun little things that they are making available for you to be able to um, do with your family. And they do a really comprehensive job. Yeah. Some of them look really amazing. So I, that's on my list of fun things too. The other thing is, I don't know if you heard about this, that Amazon today just launched their pharmacy. Oh. Did you hear about this? I don't know. I, I, my stock went up, so uh, must must have been good. Yeah. Okay. So this just happened today. They're doing um, pharmacy delivery, two day delivery. They're giving eighty percent discounts on generic drugs and forty percent discounts on name brand drugs. If you so want you just to. basically tell your doctor to send this the prescription to Amazon. Yeah, and they're giving you a bon like a a discount for if you want to not do insurance if you just want to pay cash. So. I think we should check that out. That's pretty. Oh wow! Pretty amazing. Okay, That's I have. Really interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to be I so much on this show. I, I mean, I try. Okay, good news. All right. Do you know what it is? Um, uh, I grew an inch. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. The vaccine. This is great news. This is pretty recent. So we had one before that was about 90% um, effective. Now we're up to 94.5 with this. Without, without having to be below 90. We had, um, we had Dr. Osahomer on my show and he was talking about, well, he was talking about Pfizer. It was before this and it's good news. And I'll tell you what's even better news being a military guy. There's a military guy in charge of making sure this all gets out. So you want people want to politicize it. They will get this out because the military is going to make sure it happens. Yeah, I'm so excited. And this one also, you don't have to keep so cold, right? So right, they're right. thinking that's going to be It's really minus 20. And, and there's a lot of doctors and pharmacies that have freezers that are minus 20 because there's other uh, vaccines that have to be minus 20, whereas Pfizer is minus 90, which is complicated. There's going to be dry ice involved. Yeah, that's right. So I'm very excited about this. I think for our schools, it's going to change the complexion of at least the middle of the spring, what we're hearing is that for general population, they will have something by February or March. So fingers crossed for that, because that would be really, really awesome. 
Um, the game changer. The, the world great. got to be reopened. The, and people say, well, everybody's going to take it. I want to take it. I don't care. Yeah, that's right. I think the person next to me is doesn't want to take it. I don't care. Okay, let's go back to Thanksgiving. I have a couple more questions about Thanksgiving. The first one is, do you dress up for your meal? No, we you used don't? to. We used to. But you don't anymore? Well, dress up meaning I wear slacks and a polo shirt. I mean, okay. So you... Compared oh, yeah, to the yeah, general I don't, population. I don't come with my shorts and a t-shirt, yeah. <laughs> I, have a very, I have a very good friend who her whole family would wear overalls for Thanksgiving. No, no, we're a little bit better than that. <laughs> we, 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 you know, we, 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 um, yeah, we make sure that we, again, you don't look like you, you know, you don't look like you just rolled out of bed. <laughs> okay, so the majority of people do not dress up for Thanksgiving. Oh, wow. The next question is, what is the best part of the Thanksgiving meal? So we have um, turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing, green beans, or cranberry sauce. What is your favorite part, Anthony? Stuffing, cranberry sauce, and mashed potatoes. You can take the green bean casserole home. Thank you. Yeah. Some people really love green bean casserole. I don't quite understand it. Not this bad. Really yes, love people it. like grits, too. I never got used to that in the military. <laughs> so stuffing is by far the favorite that's that? stuffing yes yeah, stuff. oh, man you wait all year for stuffing the right stuffing is magic the wrong stuffing is horrific do you guys put stuffing in your thanksgiving in your turkey or do you cook it outside um i think she cooks it outside yeah I think I mean, she may have it in and it takes it out but uh, i think outside yeah outside. yeah i think most people have kind of switched to that yeah. um okay another that turkey chicken turkey turducken Duncan, yeah, no, thank you. No, I don't understand that. I like to be, I like to that's be forced mating, that's against the law. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I think I have one more question, which is which is the best pie? Oh. Pumpkin, pecan, apple, sweet potato, chest, or chocolate? <laughs> it depends on the day, but on Thanksgiving, it's gotta be pumpkin pie, really. Yeah, it's gotta be, but but, but I like pecan pie too. Yeah. So um, that's potato pie. I don't think I've had sweet potato pie very pumpkin often. Is winning. I just have to say, like, if people love these foods so much, like pumpkin pie and stuffing, why do we not eat them more often? Like nobody makes stuffing except on Thanksgiving. You know, I think it's like anything else, right? It's like there's some traditions that you just want they're special. Yeah. You know, you just want them on 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 the day of things. If you had pumpkin pie every day, it wouldn't be special. If you had okay. turkey every day, I mean, it's a feeling of the fireplace and the pumpkin pie. And my favorite part is when everybody's sitting at the table. And this year, it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, it is going to be a little bit different. I'm really curious for you guys. Do you have a strange thing that you eat at Thanksgiving? So you have to put it in the chat. Like, what is the strangest thing or the worst thing? Sometimes when you do um, Thanksgiving potluck, you know, and everybody brings something. We we um, just have way too many courses. We have lasagna. Uh, we, we just we we just way too much. And then and then uh, and then when we're done eating, what do we do? We have dessert. And then when we finish dessert, what do we do? We we, we all take a nap and then we order pizza. <laughs> that sounds like my ideal day. I, I really like that. Have you? Do you know what this concoction is? Um, that, Anybody know what this is? Um, I'm gonna guess. A cauliflower. This is called, Anthony, I just know you're going to be horrified with what I tell you about this. This pecans, is pecans and cauliflower. <laughs> this is called pink fluffy uh, salad. It is jello and cottage cheese and oranges, and they sometimes put carrots in it. Okay. All right. I'm not horrified. And um, it is like a 70s and 80s childhood thing that people would do. Mrs. Cunningham made it for uh, for, for uh, Richie Cunningham, huh? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> right. And so it would it would like cause fear in the hearts of many. Oh, and marshmallows. Thank you. Yes. And sometimes Ooh, marshmallows. marshmallows then. And, and is it good? I mean, it's very sweet. It doesn't, I look sweet. It doesn't look terrible. What is it? No. Marshmallows, yogurt, and what? No, cottage cheese, strawberry jello, mandarin oranges, um, marshmallows. Sometimes they put like carrots or something. And what is it called? It's called pink fluffy salad. Pink I fl think the thing that gets me is the cottage cheese. You know, that's just like a texture thing I'm just not positive about. But if you have room for another course at your table, 
You know what my nickname is? What? My wife calls me Fluffy. Oh. She well, call me maybe, Fluffy. Maybe you'll love that salad. <laughs> okay. Um, I just have a couple more things. So I'm going to go to some more good things that I want to share with you. Um, Matt worked really hard to create a playlist. For Hold the on a second. Beginning. Can we back up? Can we back up? Did, did, yeah. did you say Matt worked really hard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking, but yes, he worked very hard to supply this for you guys. This is happy music. So it's a whole playlist on Spotify that he put together. Um, so that you can here's the little bitly down there. Send that to me. Yeah, so we'll chat it to you because it is full of if you're feeling a little down, this is the playlist for you to feel and grateful. Say do something that's gonna make you happy, you can share with your audience. Uh maybe next time. There's a girl named, um, I just saw it last night on the plane or in my hotel room when I was going to sleep. Her name is Courtney Hadwin. She was on um, America's Got Talent. And okay. when I tell you, it literally, like, it, I watched it 600,000 times. Like, it was crazy how good, the, she was like a Jonas Joplin meets um, the Rolling Stones meets a 14 year old girl. Talk wow. Happy, I just sent it to Matt. Talk wow, we'll happy. have to look at that, that's awesome. Yeah, send, send, and send me the playlist, that's great. What's okay. your favorite song on the playlist? Well, I wanted to tell you that he intentionally put Billy Joel on their Uptown Girl. That is the capstone to the playlist just for you. Now, can I be honest? Yeah. That's my least favorite song. Oh. <laughs> Do you know why? Do you know why? Why? It's Christy Brinkley broke my friend's heart. Billy Joel. Broke his yeah. heart. Broke his heart. She was a heartbreaker, that's for sure. Um, okay, we just have a few minutes left. So I want to, I have two more shout outs that I want to do. And then I'm going to talk um, one more about how to cultivate gratitude. So Anderson University, um, our friend Andrew there, they did an awesome job on retention. He's a great partner. He and I presented together on leadership, 2.8% increase. Great job, Andrew. And then also Mars Hill, which we've talked about before, 4% increase in freshman retention. It's their highest in 15 years um, in light of COVID. Wow. So I'm really proud of them. Lisa and Dave and Ryan worked really hard on those uh, for those students. I want to go to cultivate gratitude because I, like I said, I'm thinking about what are actual things that you can do um, to become more um, grateful over this Thanksgiving. So a couple of things that come to mind, write thank you notes, find a thing that somebody did that you're grateful for and just write it for them. It is a lost art and nobody does it anymore. So with your family, just think of a bunch of people that you can send thank you notes like to. That. It will make a huge difference. Also, get in the mindset of thanking people mentally. So if somebody does something kind for you and they're not with you to say thank you, be grateful in your brain about the way that they're helping you. Um, also, gratitude journal has been shown to really increase people's happiness. Just write down everyday things that you're grateful for and count your blessings. Service projects. This is really important for you to take your um, energy and your attention off of you and help somebody else who needs it. That's a great way for you to develop that gratitude. And then also just meditating and being solitude. We're alone a lot, but we're not nece necessarily mindfully um, in solitude, thinking about what's going on with me and just taking a minute and taking a breath. So I think those will all be really helpful. Um, and then also in meditation, go outside. It's so powerful to be um, outside and to be able to think through what's happening with you and just listen to the sounds and look at the beauty and kind of stuff. I will tell you also, I've been traveling a little bit and travel. It's okay to travel. It's not okay to stand next to somebody without your mask on. It's not okay to eat in a restaurant, you know, two feet from people without your mask on. You know, it's not okay to get on an airplane with your mask on, but travel, get on a plane, wear your mask, you know, go to the nice places, warm places so you can eat outside, be with your family, yeah. go like you can travel i've taken i think i took two today i took a, a rapid test and a regular test i took i think 11 tests so far um i just test a lot i travel and i like yeah. i matter of fact i had to, my my friend who's my driver too when i go to the airports he dropped me off i told my wife to leave the keys in the in, in the mailbox and she said no i'm home i said no, no leave them in the mailbox i'm gonna get tested i got a rapid test before i came in the house i was only gone 24 hours so i'm gonna keep traveling 
And the way to keep traveling is to prove to my wife that I'm being safe. That's right. That's exactly right. And I do think that's a renewing place. And I think, like we said, Travel Zoo is a great place for you to just dream about. These are places you can go and have- How were you when you were traveling on the plane? How'd you feel? Um, It was okay. I, we had a delay, so I was on the plane for longer than we were supposed to be, so that wasn't my favorite, but everybody was really compliant. Everybody wore their mask. They gave us the little thing to wipe everything down, you know, when we got on the plane. You, so you know you have, a, you have a better chance of crashing in a plane than you do getting COVID on a plane? There was a study that came out. Really? Harvard. Yep. You have a bet. It's one in 11 million chance of dying in a plane crash. It's one in 23 million chance of getting COVID on a plane. Wow. Yeah, they did. Because well, really, yeah, that, that air is filtered constantly. If you wear a mask, no, you don't hear flight attendants getting sick. Yeah. That's, that's, getting sick. that's super helpful. Um, okay. Our next, Anthony, our next meeting is December 8th. I'm telling everyone, you're on mute. I don't know what happened. Um, there we go. December 8th. I December 8th. am looking and I am seeing, it's probably, it, I see you, you're in there. I'm on the calendar, awesome. Well, listen, you guys, I hope that you've had some fun with us. I hope that you have um, enjoyed spending time with us. Please be very careful about your Thanksgiving. Please take care of yourself. I would just remind you that Thanksgiving comes after a really rough year. <laughs> The original Thanksgiving was a lot of hardship, a lot of people feeling stressed and overwhelmed, and they took a moment to be with each other and to celebrate and to be grateful and to, to enjoy um, all sorts of different things. So I think this is a time that we have to really hold and make a discipline for us to be grateful and thankful for and all. be grateful for yourself that you made it this far. You taught the children, you did your, the, the, the kids, you, you did your job, you, you took care of your family, you, you cried, you laughed, you got through it or you're getting through it. Like people have got to be grateful for themselves. They got to be grateful for the power that they possess that, that they have put one foot in front of the other. And none of us do that enough. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, thank you, sir. Always good to spend time with you. Um, oh, where am I going? I got no place to go. I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna hang out with me for a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, no. Thank you, everyone. And All right. Well, uh, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great day. Bye.